overall, East River, we're going to have ourselves a pretty nice afternoon, slightly warmer than yesterday as we get into the low to what times mid 80s, but out to the west, slightly cooler in the 70s. But then we'll also have the opportunity for some showers and thunderstorms later in the day, a few of which could become strong to severe. That chance for showers and the occasional rumble of thunder moves to the southeast overnight, so we'll need to watch that as well, but with low temperatures in the 50s to low 60s. We'll talk about the rest of your seven day forecast coming up, but until then, midday in Kelba Wind starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Midday in Kelloland. A woman is on the road to recovery after a major motorcycle crash. And severe weather wrecked havoc along the Mid-Atlantic, killing two and impacting thousands. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. This midday, we are getting a closer look at violent crimes on South Dakota's reservations. 21 indigenous people were killed on tribal land in 2022. Eight of the victims were girls and women. The youngest victim was a six-year-old boy. The information is from the state crime report, but the deaths are not included in the statewide total because they're investigated by the FBI. The report does not include information on the age, sex, and race of the offenders. You can take a closer look at the numbers and the report in a Kelloland.com original on our website for you right now. It's been a long and often bumpy road to recovery for a Sioux Falls woman who was critically injured in a motorcycle crash last year. Brina Grace was a passenger on a motorcycle that collided with a car in May of 2022 on, of all days, Friday the 13th. The crash left her in a medically induced coma after suffering a stroke and severe brain damage from the crash. Her parents never thought she would survive. We've been on the this roller coaster to begin with that was just absolute down and then you'd get hope and then it was down again. Brina was so badly injured it was months before she was even able to talk. But she's talking now and has plenty to say about her recovery and about the importance of wearing a helmet. You're going to hear her message to Surge's rally goers in tonight's Eye on Kelloland at 10 o'clock. Rally goers can enjoy some smooth weather today, although there might be some rainy weather out west, right, Adam? Yeah, it's going to be a case of we watch the skies as we head through the afternoon and evening again out west, but it's not going to say it's going to rain all day. I mean, look at what we have right now in Rapid City. That's nice. That's actually a very nice view from our camera out there. 70 in Pennington County, an east wind at three miles per hour. Great start to the second half of your day for anybody out there enjoying the rally. But like I said, later in the evening, we may need to watch the skies for more than just a few high level clouds. Meanwhile, there's the Sioux Empire Fairgrounds, 80 from our downtown camera with a south wind at five miles per hour. It'll be a good afternoon and a good evening to head out over there if you have the chance to do so. A little warmer already than yesterday, but still not all that bad at all, all things considered. 70s, though, for a vast majority of Kelo land, unless you're in Custer and Pine Ridge on the cool side at 68 and 63, respectively. 79 for Spencer, Sisseton, and Ortonville. 75 at the Capitol, 77 Aberdeen, Yankton as well. 76 for Winter, Chamberlain, and Mitchell, with not much of a breeze to speak of, so it's a pretty calm day on our hands as well. We do have some cloud cover out there, hence why uh, southwestern South Dakota has been a little bit behind in terms of the temperature, but beyond that, it's been dry for now. That's the key phrase. Not to say, again, that's going to be a washout or anything like that, but we do need to keep an eye on the little disturbance out to the west over Wyoming that's going to move eastward and try and send the potential for a couple of showers and thunderstorms into western and southwestern South Dakota. And a few of those storms could become strong to severe as we head later into the day. But for the rest of this day, though, we're still looking at some very nice weather to the east, uh, mostly sunny skies for southeastern Kelloland with highs generally in the low to at times mid 80s and a light southeasterly breeze. Uh, further to the north along I-29, uh, we'll again see low to at times mid 80s, maybe some upper 70s in a couple of areas like Watertown, for example. Out west, though, things do change a little bit. We have more 70s to talk about, especially for Martin over to the hills and the Wyoming border. But that's also where we have that potential for uh, some of those thunderstorms to fire up later in the day. We have more opportunities for unsettled weather to talk about, especially as we head into the second half of the week and more so East River this time around. Details on that and the rest of your seven day forecast are on the way.
All right, sounds good. Thank you, Adam. Now that July's sizzling numbers are all in, a climate monitoring organization made it official. July 2023 was Earth's hottest month on record by a wide margin. According to last Tuesday's calculations, July's global average temperature of 62.51 degrees Fahrenheit was six-tenths of a degree Fahrenheit higher than the previous record set in 2019. Normally, global temperature records are broken by hundredths of a degree, so this margin is unusual. Thousands of people along the Mid-Atlantic are assessing damage, cleaning up, and waiting for the power to come back on following a nasty round of storms yesterday. Meg Oliver reports from Whitehall, Maryland. Down utility poles are lining a stretch of Route 140 in Westminster, Maryland, after a storm ripped through the area. The poles came down like dominoes Monday, trapping 33 adults and 14 children in vehicles surrounded by live power lines. Realizing those motors were trapped and would be there for some time, we made arrangements to provide water, throwing it into the vehicles to sustain them, while BG&E was en route to shut down, de-energize all the lines that were around the area. Once the power was shut off, authorities say everyone was evacuated safely. There were people who were stuck and stranded in cars who were able to sleep in their own beds last night. And that's because of the work of everybody who moved and our first responders. Outside Baltimore, a huge tree sliced through the home of a couple in their 70s. Their son is grateful both made it out with just minor injuries. Probably would have been killed. Um, like I said, somebody was looking out for them. In Tennessee, the severe conditions snapped trees, ripped into this high school, and forced hundreds of people to evacuate this apartment complex. And my power flickered, and at that point, you know, I just grabbed him and we got in the bathtub. Across the country, more than 8,400 flights were delayed and more than 1,700 canceled as thunderstorms forced ground stops at major airports along the East Coast. While cleanup is just beginning, travel disruptions are getting back to normal and power outages have reduced significantly along the East Coast. Meg Oliver, CBS News, Whitehall, Maryland. The storms are blamed for at least two deaths. One person was struck by lightning in Alabama and the other was hit by a falling tree in South Carolina. Lottery players will have another shot at a massive Mega Millions jackpot. The estimated $1.55 billion prize up for grabs tonight has been building for months thanks to 31 straight drawings without a jackpot winner. It now ranks as the third largest lottery prize in U.S. history. Mega Millions jackpot winners are so rare thanks to incredibly long odds of 1 in 302.6 million. The lump sum option, if won, would be about $757.2 million. And according to South Dakota's public disclosure laws, if you were to win, your name and city are made public.